So I'm making excuses right at the gate here, guys. Uh, my results did not jive with the manual. Uh, I'm scratching my head to try and figure out why. I did confirm the results on the uh, Modus with my hand tech, and uh, both of them uh, were singing pretty much the same song. So a bit of a head scratcher why the amplitude of the signal is not as per the spec. So we'll start with the crank sensor, as I actually mentioned. Uh, take the time to actually take in the detail of the drawing. Um, item 5 here, again let's just confirm it is in fact the crank sensor. And we can see that there is no independent or uh, there's no reference or power supply to the actual sensor itself, unlike the cam position sensor which is a Hall effect sensor, has a 12 volt supply going to it as you can see from the drawing. Um, there is no such supply to the crank sensor. Uh, so we can be relatively sure it's just an, an induction type sensor generates its own small AC voltage and from that they can derive the uh, rotation of the crank. There's a couple of uh, indexes on the rotor or the, uh, the crankshaft position sensor plate as they refer to it in the manual. Essentially uh, a reluctor wheel or trigger wheel if you prefer mixing terminologies but as essentially a reluctor wheel as a VRS type sensor yeah so we have a coil in the sensor a magnet and that magnetic flux is influenced by the rotation of the uh, the sensor plate and you can see here how it's trying to convey its tooth differently so that the sensor can actually sense that indexation uh, there's also some shielding on the uh, harness uh, providing uh, some noise immunity, I guess, to the uh, to the small AC system uh, signal that's on the line here, and of course the ECM is interpreting that data with respect to uh, crank rotation. I can't actually show you the sensor because it's buried behind the uh, the bell housing in the gearbox. Um, this is the gearbox actually removed. We're looking at the rear of the engine, the rear uh, flange for the crankshaft, uh, the sensor itself something like this just a single bolt to actually mount it and the sensor is actually through a bore in the uh, block casting in order to pick up the uh, the crankshaft position sensor plate rotation which is this is the crankshaft here guys you can see one of the uh, you can see the, uh, uh, the counterbalances on the uh, on the crank itself um, the bearings and where the uh, big end of the uh, connecting rod would actually go. Um, so this is the flange, that is that flange there that we're looking at, item one, and behind that, so you'd have to remove the uh, flex plate in the case of an automatic transmission or the uh, flywheel in the case of a manual transmission in order to actually see this detail. And this is what's actually triggering uh, or influence the in in influencing the induction of the AC on the uh, on the sensor itself here guys right so again the sensor plate the sensor itself the interface wiring to the ECM for interpretation of what's going on with the engine with respect to crank rotation in the event you don't have a, a scope um, that's fine um, you can also uh, get some a basic idea of what's going on with the uh, sensor uh, you can check the coil uh, if you have an issue with the magnet or with the flex or with the sensor plate. Obviously, this is not going to be reflected uh, in a simple uh, resistance measurement, but you can certainly get some basics. You can see the uh, this can be done from this connector or at the, from the ECM itself, and you can see the, the resistance values that actually spikes out. Again, um, this is the type of sensor you want to be sure about if you have an issue with it does involve uh, gearbox removal in order to access it. This is actually showing us the uh, cam and crank. It's done so so you can get an idea with respect to correlation. But we're just interested in the crank sensor detail here, right? So you can see um, the way that the wheel is toothed, there's a couple of couple that are missing in order to give it an indexation. So you can see there, clearly we have a large gap in the wheel and then a single gap in the wheel. So that's how the, uh, the uh, ECM can interpret not only rotation of the crank, but get some idea with respect to its position as well. And of course, this positioning will um, correlate with the, with the cam as well, but beyond the scope of this video, right? 
So this is what we should actually see in the video here, guys, and the, on the scope. And you can see here, this is channel two we're talking about. Item two, which is in fact a crank signal. Uh, there's some detail here with respect to uh, timing, of course. It's giving you some extra detail there. And channel two. Here's where we actually measure it between. We'll find uh, on the ECM the connector, C01, and we'll go between these two pins here. This is actually a ground reference on the ECM. So we'll check to see between these two points and we'll actually go between 51 and ground to see if there's any significant difference. There shouldn't be, but um, appreciate it on drawing. that you might be leading yourself astray if you simply went to pin 51 on C01, pin 51 to ground, if there was an issue in here, inside the ECM, somehow the signal ground itself was corrupted, um, it's possible you might think, well, there's nothing wrong with that, when in fact, um, you should be measuring not to, not the chassis ground, but um, the signal ground, which is pin 36. So we'll go between them, and again, just for, just for checking out, I don't expect there to be a difference between 51 and chassis ground and 51 and 36, but we'll see. We'll check it out. The manual actually gives us not only an idea of what we're, we should be seeing, but actually also shows um, the settings with respect to your scope. So you can see here channel 2, which is the crank sig signal uh, um, trace that we're interested in. Um, it tells you here channel 2, 5 volt per division with a 20 uh, millisecond per division time base. Now I appreciate guys, some scopes will give you um, their time base settings in um, per division. Other scopes will give it to you in the entire um, graticule, right? So be aware of that difference because when you see the modus, it will be the entire graticule and other scopes will just be per division. Okay, so here I am at the car here guys. This is the ECM of course, and you can see uh, you can't see it very clearly, but you're going to have to take my word for it. I'm back probed in a uh, that pink and blue wire, uh, pin 51 and what was it, 36, 37 respectively, right? So uh, there's, a, have a wee, there's a weird issue going here on here that I'm no too sure uh, <laughs> uh, what's going on, to be quite honest. Um, I'm getting nowhere near the amplitude on the uh, crank signal uh, the output from a crank sensor that I should be um, nowhere near the spec value, but it definitely is the same trace signature. Let me start the car and I'll show you. So you're just going to have to tolerate the uh, racket of the car in the background there, guys. Again, uh, this 100 milliseconds is, respect, uh, is with respect to the entire graticule, so it is 10 milliseconds per division. And um, I'm off on the scale here for the simple reason. Uh, my output from my crank sensor is nowhere near what the spec value is, yet there's no issue with the car. Now I have two S64s, I'm going to double check this on both cars because I suspect um, there's something weird going on here with respect to the, the specs in the manual and my particular car. Perhaps it's a different variant of some sort, I don't know, but um, I'm certainly not getting the same uh, output values that it calls for. So here is the actual uh, the, the trace. Looks very, very similar to what the manual actually spec'd out. You can see the uh, two distinctive uh, uh, indexes in the uh, the uh, the ring, and of course this is a function of uh, RPM, right? So uh, let me just race the engine for a moment. I'll let this uh, let me just set this to record here. Shut the car off. I don't need the car running here. Go back through the buffer. Okay, so. You can see that is very similar to the trace that the uh, the manual actually calls for. You'll notice there's a wee bit of a variation in the amplitude of the signal here. Can you appreciate that this is purely a function of rotational speed? As the engine goes through its compression cycles, there's going to be a wee bit of variation there. So you can see there is a, a tiny bit of oscillation in the signal. Again, the frequency is a function of how fast the engine is. You can see there, clearly the speed is increasing, as is the amplitude of the signal. That's when I was erasing the engine there. Until it comes back down again, right? So I hope that makes some sense. 
So I'm sorry guys, um, obviously the whole point of this video is you know, you've got the specs in the manual and you compare them to what you actually see. Um, it's not an issue in my setup, I thought if I got an atten internal attenuator or set, I'm no genius when it comes to the Morris. I thought maybe there's an internal attenuation setting I've got or something. No, that's not the case because when I go straight to the battery with 12 volts on the applicable setting, it goes to 12 volts. So, uh, don't know. Um, I'm way off on the spec value. Yeah, there's certainly no issue with the car. So, that's it. Um, yeah, I hope that made some sense there, guys. Uh, just a quick look at the uh, crank sensor output. That's it, boys. Cheers.